Hi, I'm Richard Hanks, president of the Stanwood Area Historical Society, and this is my wife Robin. She's the treasurer of the society, and welcome to the Kameno Pioneer Cemetery. This was established in 1887 with several plats, and then it was expanded in 1907 with more, and then years later, they also expanded it as well. There are several people in here who were a large part of particularly Utsalati when it was a shipping center for Kameno Island. Most of the people around here lived at Livingston Bay area and then along the route that is now 532 up to Utsalati Bay. So it was a very very active kind of center at that time for logging, shipping, those kinds of things. And many of these people were either in the logging business, the dairy business, dairy farming after the uh, the area was logged, and uh, otherwise providing services like hotel keepers, saloon keepers, those kinds of things. So this is the uh, the largest headstone in the area, and it's of Peter de Jorup. And Peter de Jorup and the de Jorup family were very important figures here on uh, Kameno Island. He ran the large uh, Kameno, primarily the Utsalati Hotel and Bar, of which literature tells us there were plenty of fights inside and out, so it was kind of a rowdy place for loggers and mill workers from the shingle mills around here and things like that would come in. Um, he was also a very prominent person over the course of his lifetime. He was uh, Danish, he was born in Denmark in 1845, and uh, he would die here in 1890, just one year after the state became a state and not a territory. But he did spend two stints in the legislature, the territorial legislature, and he was five times a commissioner from Kameno Island. So this is Daniel Calden. And his father was very important, particularly to the development of Stanwood. James Calden was into this area over there off Camino Island, near the Stanwood area, at Centerville, as early as around 1866, something like that. He married a, what they called, Stick Samish woman. She was Upper Skagit, um, and her name was Louisa. So his father and his mother, Louisa, are buried at the other Pioneer Cemetery in this area, the one that is north of Stanwood proper. Daniel is listed as a saloon keeper, but he was obviously 50% native. And there are other natives that are buried in this place. Uh, we think the Morrisons might be here. Um, also, the Oxteens are possibly here. These were ones. And about 1890, a third of the workers on the island were actually Native American, so many of them stayed. And uh, the O'Briens were another family. They were Irish. John O'Brien intermarried with a, a woman who was uh, Kikialis. And the Kikialis people were the ones that really occupied northern Kameno Island. This was their area. They are Skagit people, and many of them later went in and became part of the Swinomish Reservation on Fatalvo Island. So this is Nils Peter Frosted. Um, he was Norwegian. And if I'm correct, the literature says there was a Peter Frosted who jumped ship at Utsalati, probably in the late 1870s, maybe the early 1880s, we're not quite sure about that. And he would uh, stay in this area, become a farmer, and later on, of course, died. He wasn't very old when he died. I think he was only possibly in his 30s when he actually died. But the other man that he was associated with, the other one that he jumped ship with at Utsalati, was named Hans Borison. And the interesting story about Hans is, is that he actually, they got off ship, the cook that was going with them got caught, but Hans and, and, and Peter, they actually made it to shore. Well, the ship's captain was very upset about this, and he put together a search party, and they looked a long time for Hans, but he hid out. So finally the ship had to leave on its way, so there was another Norwegian who landed on shore there at Utsalati, and he stayed, and I think he was also probably daring farming at that time until he died. The interesting thing about Hans Borison is that his grandson became Stan Borison, who became quite a well-known TV star, musician, particularly in the Seattle area, uh, and was from the Everett area as well. Uh, he just died actually not too long ago, in 2017. So that was uh, the Hans Borison's grandson, who later came, and all because Hans just wanted to stay in Kameno Island. There's a couple of young girls that we know that are here. Um, Ella and Amanda Domerud, and, and actually their father, which um, is just listed in the, in the literature as Old Man Domerud, but his name was actually Lars, and um, his wife and the rest of his family is all over at the Kamena Lutheran Cemetery. So 
you know, you never know for sure if um, the girls were moved over there, but there's no markers for them over there. And we do know that uh, Ella was just 18 when she died. Um, and one of them, uh, there was a young school teacher, one of the first school teachers at Livingston Bay was a Miss Domerud. So, and the Domeroods married into the Lindsay family. They married into the Kincaid family. So um, it's interesting when you start, like, I think that when Olena um, Domerud died, I think she had um, 13 grandkids and 33 great grandchildren and two great greats. So there's a, a lot of family left, and probably if they hear this, they could. Um, yes, one of them married a Lequi, uh, Peter Lequi, uh, and then he he uh, was um, drowned young age. So it's um, you know we just we this know one of the things that I've observed when I look at all these names and stuff because like the. The Domeroods were um, descendants of the Lands, and that was the Lands Hill, and they came here early, early, early and bought a ranch called the Davis Ranch, which we're figuring was along the Davis Slough. And, um, you know, so when you start to realize that, and they lived in Stanwood and had a ranch on the island, so a lot, this Stanwood and Camino, the, the theme that we see over and over, Stanwood Camino has been a community for well over a hundred years, and and there is no dispute about that. People just went back and forth as one community. There are people who are listed in both cemeteries, in the Camino Lutheran and also the Camino Pioneer. Right. And they could have been moved. We do know that people have been moved out of the Florence Cemetery, their headstone. They may not be here, but they wanted the headstone someplace. So it is possible that you know some people, perhaps after the flood or anything like that, they might have moved whatever remains were left to higher ground at Camino we know, Lutheran. We do know there's a whole group of Lindsay's yes. Yes, at the uh, at the Camino Lutheran Cemetery. Right. right. So thanks for taking a walk with us around the Camino Pioneer Cemetery. We hope you get a chance on your own to come by, take a look at it, and perhaps just use our audio tour so you can get some facts about it and understand more about the early pioneers who really settled this area.